Let's continue. You have two major classifications of type 1 hypersensitivity. Localized and systemic. In localized, uh, we get signs such as uh, hay fever, allergic asthma, hives, allergic conjunctitis, and allergic rhinitis. These can be uh, divided into hereditary and non-hereditary. Hereditary refers to atopy. Atopy means that you have a you have a predominance in synthesizing more IgE and you're more prone to get an allergic reaction. This occurs, for instance, in asthma. They have an uh, they have higher amount of IgE on their mast cells and basophils, so they're more prone to get this allergic reaction. While non-hereditary allergies can include uh, peanuts, latex penicillin and so on in systemic you, you see other signs such uh, you uh, you have anaphylactic shock this can be due to penicillin so let's assume you are allergic to penicillin and uh, by some mistake you you get a penicillin shot in a hospital or somewhere this will cause a systemic vasodilation you remember histamine caused vasodilation and the other cytokines also caused vasodilation so imagine if it's systemic then the blood flow will decrease to your other organs causing them to become very hypoxic and eventually unable to work. This will be a type of anaphylactic shock. Shock is collapse of cardiovascular system. This can also be due to, for instance, bee stings. So you should be very careful if you're allergic to bee stings, try to keep away from them. So what are your inflammatory response uh, upon type 1 hypersensitivity? How can you recognize this in other words? You can see by their uh, people's skin itching and flushing, so you, they will become quite red and edematous. So you can see that there is increase in edema, the uh, formation in the skin. You can see that people are wheezing. You remember the sign of wheezing? It's a whistling sound upon expiration, and also this will be due to hypermucous secretion and bronchospasm. But the worst can get when it's laryngoedema. This is a very common cause of death in people with anaphylactic shock because laryngoedema will cause an airway obstruction and people need air to breathe. In cardiovascular system, due to this hypotension caused by the increased vasodilation, you will have a tachycompensatory tachycardia. And also you have probably seen that people with allergy and asthma in excessive amount, they can get very nauseated and even vomit and also they are probably going to the bathroom many times. So how can you diagnose someone with type 1 hypersensitivity? In other words, how can you diagnose someone with an allergy? You can do the RAS test. RAS stands for Radio Allergy Sorbent Test. This is a blood test for our allergy. Also, you can do a skin prick test. So what is it? Skin prick, you just take a little bit of this allergen that you're supposedly allergic to and you give it to the patient. And if the patient gets a rash or swollenness in that area, this proves a positive test for the allergy. And finally, what is the treatment? You remember our example is usually asthma. People with asthma, when they have heavy wheezing and the other signs, what do they always require in worst case scenario? They require a shot of epinephrine or adrenaline. This is due to that epinephrine has an anti-inflammatory function. And that's why decreased inflammation causes decreased mucus hypersecretion and decreased, uh, decreased bronchoconstriction. And now you know a little bit more about type 1 hypersensitivity. Thank you.